This is Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host, and this is another episode of our popular health and wellness tips program here on Live Life Well TV. It is my pleasure to welcome back Leslie Marchand, licensed clinical social worker with Silverado Hospice. And Leslie's topic for today is how to manage your emotions during difficult times. And that topic is right on time. Stay tuned to meet Leslie once again. We are back and now it is my pleasure to welcome back a very important part of health and wellness tips. If you've been watching over the last number of episodes, Leslie Marchand, welcome again. So great to have you on this episode. Thank you, Robert. It's a pleasure to be here and excited to discuss this topic. Yes, me too, because as always with you, it's right on time. So start wherever you want, because uh, wherever you start, I think it'll be very valuable. How to manage things during difficult times, how to manage your emotions, how to manage everything. Uh, and really, to me, uh, this is what the last year has been a test of. So uh, where do we begin with this important topic? I think just starting with that it's about our emotional health and that that's important to pay attention to. We often think about our physical health and proper diet and nutrition and exercise and going to the doctor. Um, we may think about relationships and kind of interconnected health and often emotional health is either kind of last on the list or it's just difficult sometimes to focus on because it's, it's less concrete, less tangible. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. You know, I've been thinking over the last number of weeks, how important our emotions are in relation to our physical, mental, and spiritual health. I, I don't know, Leslie, and it's just me speaking here. But I think emotions are, are key uh, in how we choose to address our day, our future, what mindset we choose to uh, adopt. I think emotions, because science is now proving that they're so directly linked to our health and wellness, emotions are key. Uh, so how do we manage our emotions during difficult times? Well, that is a good introduction into the steps that I will share. The first one is to feel the emotions. And so the step that I call is feel it, whatever it is in the moment. And I think the biggest thing that is obvious but not obvious is that emotions are like a wave that come in when we're not looking or paying attention and we don't have control over it. So we may be walking down the street and I don't know if you could hear the ambulance as you were introducing me, but even just something like the sound of a car crash or an ambulance might give us a startle response or a fear response. And that kind of flows through our emotions as well as our physiology. And that was, an external circumstance that just was momentary. So that, that might pass through or by me and the next moment I'm fine. And then there's the things that are more personal with our emotions that come and go or stay for long periods of time. And sometimes I would say quite often, we're not really aware of what we're feeling unless we stop and pay attention and identify what we're feeling in that moment. So step one is to identify and allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling at any given moment. Makes sense to me. What's step two? Step two is, it, it's, it's kind of blunt, but it's also very gentle and compassionate is deal with it. So say you're feeling anger and frustration, whatever level, 
you can walk around, I certainly can walk around with a low level of frustration for hours, if not longer, without really realizing it. So once I step back and go, wait a minute, I'm kind of frustrated. And so dealing with it is, okay, what am I frustrated about? Now that I've identified I'm feeling frustration, what am I frustrated about? And how can I deal with that? If it's, you know, I got an, an email that upset me, I might respond to that email. If it's just um, the feeling of frustration, you know, maybe it's I need to kind of, um, you know, tense my body and relax it to let the feeling move through me. Maybe I need to write about what I'm frustrated about and then rip up the piece of paper. So it's any number of responses to whatever you're feeling, but it's, it's taking a specific action to, to deal with that emotion. Yeah, very important for sure. Is there a step three? Step three is to heal it. So the process is feel it, deal with it, and heal it. Mm. So ultimately, and this is especially if we're talking about emotions that we might consider ne negative, or, you know, as the title of this, uh, this talk suggests, it's how to deal with our emotions and feelings during difficult circumstances. So dealing with something of a difficult circumstance in life, maybe it's sadness, maybe you know, a, a friend just moved away or, um, you know, I can't have close contact with somebody. You know, we are at the end of 2020 now. We've been dealing with less contact with people that are close to us. So dealing with it is, is noticing that sadness, dealing with it, maybe making a phone call. And then healing it, again, can, can take many different forms. Um, it may be going back to acknowledging the difficult circumstances and just having some compassion for myself that, um, you know, there may or may not be a whole lot I can do about that sadness. Every moment of every day, you know, I can reach out and talk to somebody um, and that's dealing with it in one moment. The next moment, it might be, you know, turning on the TV and watching, you know, I Love Lucy to make myself laugh. Um, so sometimes it's just that shift in perspective. If we go back to anger or frustration, it might be releasing it and saying something to yourself, that self-compassionate self-talk of, you know, it's okay to feel frustrated because one way to not heal it is to judge the thought or the feeling and then we stay in a cycle. And so one way to heal it is to just release it and, and move on. You know, as you're, you're highlighting these three very important steps, I, I cannot get the image of my father out of my mind. And I'm going to um, share this with you in the form of an example uh, in which the three steps that you've just uh, shared with us can be applied. So my father was this brilliant, effervescent man right? Um, so compassionate, very much an empath, cared so much about the health and well-being of others, uh, nations, the planet, so on and so forth. But my life growing up with him, my mother and brother, was very regimented because my dad was from Germany and everything had to be done every day uh, on an exact schedule. So dinner was always at 6.30 because at 7 p.m. world news came on. And God forbid uh, we would miss that, or he, most importantly, would miss that. So we'd have to rush through dinner, and then at three of seven, every night, he would get up from the dinner table, whether dessert had been served or not, and go into the living room, sit in his chair, get the clicker for the TV, and, you know, he would be sitting down, and he was so 
ready to receive and wanting to know what happened in the world that day. And I would watch him for the next 20 minutes during this news broadcast because let's say the first story, because in the 70s during those years, the Middle East war was raging out of control. And there was this danger from what I remember of it escalating into a world war because Russia sided with the Arabs and the US sided with the Israelis and there was all this tension. And my father would start to watch the broadcast at 7.02. And then as these horrible stories would come on the air, one after the other, I would watch his posture. And you know he would start leaning down in the chair as if you know, the whole weight of the world was on his shoulders and he would get up at 7.30, an absolute wreck. And for the rest of the evening, whenever I would pass him in his office, I could hear this. <sighs> you know, and, and because he had gone through the Holocaust in Germany, this sparked a lot of past habitual uh, negative thought patterning with him to where he would think he'd have to run from the military again or whatever the story is because now there's a world war based on what was happening in the Middle East. So how would you apply <laughs> those three steps to help my father deal with really difficult stuff emotionally? Right, well, there's a lot there and I would start by saying that it, it is a prime example of how our emotions and feelings can be so much more than just this moment. And so ideally we are dealing with this moment as it comes and also knowing that our history, our whole family history, our life circumstances that we have experienced up until this point, those are all things that can come in and bring complexity to how we feel. And so this practice for me is a way to deal with what's going on in this moment. And ideally it can also help work through some of those things from prior experiences as well. Um, you know, because in that example that you shared, it starts by talking about the impact of just watching the news. And then the reality is there's so much beneath that. And that's true in all of our lives. You know, we may have, you know, I might feel a bit of sadness over something that happened today. And when I really sit with this process to feel something and deal with it and heal it, I might find in that process that I'm actually feeling sadness over something that happened 10 years ago. So this process is, can help with all of those things. I would say it's not a magic cure. This is where as the therapist in me would say, you know, if emotions are overwhelming on a regular basis, get professional help um, because there is a lot of complexity and that is one of the most compassionate things we can do for ourselves is to get support in the form of family and friends and professional help. Um, but going back to the example and just how we can use this in our in our day to day life, it's notice in this moment, what am I feeling? If I like how I'm feeling, sit with that, let that expand and grow so that my feelings feel good, my body feels good, my body knows that this is something I wanna come back to. And if it doesn't feel good, how I feel, how can I shift it? So feel, how do I feel? Really kind of depressed and there's all this stuff going on in the world right now. And then I've got all this history in the past as well. So how, how do I deal with it? Well, one, I'm going to try to think about something other than all those images that just flooded me of everything wrong in the world. And this is where I like to come to. Um, and I, it's, it's one of those stories that's out there. I don't know if it's true or not. I think it is. 
that uh, Mr. Rogers, our favorite friend, that if you're above a certain age, you grow up, grew up watching, you know, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And he is well known for saying when there's difficult things going on in the world and you're wondering how to make sense of it, look for the helpers. Because anytime that there is difficult things going on in the world or in your life, somewhere, somebody is trying to make a difference. And so it's that simple shift in focus. And yes, there may be difficult things going on in your life or, or in the world, and we need to deal with those things. And at the same time, we can make a conscious choice to bring in the positive and bring in how we can start to change and shift things. So I hope that this process helps with that. Yeah, makes total sense to me. And really, um, the, this example of my dad is not too far-fetched in the present because so many people get uh, their information from the news now. And the news now, just like it was back then, is not a very positive thing. So, you know, what do you do when there's doom and gloom being broadcast every single night uh, on, on national uh, cable news, for example? And then how do you go to bed uh, knowing that things are going to be okay? So this three-step process for that and really so many other things, Leslie, is, is so beneficial. So can you review the three steps once again? Yes, and, and what you were just sharing reminded me of one other point I want to make because the process is effective for external events, feelings that come in from outside, as well as internal things that are just kind of brewing inside of us, whether it's the thoughts that create emotions or the circumstances that we're sitting with. So the process is step one is, is feel it, feel the emotion. So that starts with naming it. So you sit long enough to recognize what the feeling is. You might even notice where you feel it in your body because emotions do live in our body. If I'm sad, I might feel a heaviness in my heart. If I'm stressed, I might feel you know, the weight of the world on my shoulders. If I'm angry or afraid, I might feel like a gut you know, guttural response to something going on internally or externally. And just noticing that, naming it and feeling it, allowing yourself to feel it. And then step two is to deal with it, deal with the feelings or the emotions or, or the experience itself. And how you deal with it is appropriate to whatever that feeling is. It might be just a thought process or a mental shift. It might be taking some action. It might be journaling to, to write through what you're feeling. Um, it might be some interaction with another person if, you know, if the emotion involves a relationship. And then step three is to heal the feeling. And this is specific to if we are talking about difficult emotions or difficult life circumstances, when we deal with that specific situation, how can we move into healing after that? If it was a difficult exchange and we've, you know, talked through the circumstances with another person and we ask for forgiveness from them and we forgive ourselves as well, that may bring healing. If it's shifting to focus on something else after we've dealt with it. But it's, it's bringing some sense of closure or um, completion or the final phase in a cycle because our emotions are always coming and going. We are gonna loop back into the same emotion or something else, but we, we just find some closure or completion um, in that healing process. Makes sense. And before we bring closure to this episode, like the segue, oh, I amaze <laughs> myself sometimes, you know? <laughs> well, you had a wonderful, um, very quick way uh, to, to title each one of the three steps. It was something like heal it, feel it. What were those three that you shared? 
Right, so step one is feel it. Step two is deal with it. Step three is heal it. I love it. I love it. That's, that's perfect. Anything else you'd like to say before we conclude? As always, try it. See if it works for you. I think all of these health and wellness tips that we share are customizable and take what you like and leave the rest and, and see if it helps. I, I second that emotion. Uh, for those of you that are watching this and other health and wellness tips episodes, uh, Leslie shares some really easy to incorporate ways to rise above uh, where you might be finding yourself at the moment, particularly if where you find yourself isn't a great place to be at all. But as I always tell myself, it's one thing to feel kind of stuck uh, and and almost victimized by what's going on on the outside of you, or as Leslie said, what might be going on in the inside of you. And sometimes those two are, are connected more often than not, but it's up to you and I to want to shift a negative into a positive. And that's what this episode has been all about. And that's what all episodes of Health and Wellness Tips are about here on Live Life Well TV. I know uh, that Leslie will be back with us, but for the time being, Leslie, I wanna thank you for sharing what you did with us today. Really vitally important stuff. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the invitation and and our chance to talk about things that are important to us and I know to other people as well. I agree, that's what it's all about. So with that said, I would like to thank Ms. Leslie Marchand, licensed clinical social worker uh, with Silverado Hospice for joining us once again. We look forward to seeing her on future episodes of Health and Wellness Tips. But for now, I would like to thank you for joining us on this episode. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well, host for health and wellness tips. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon.